Hello students, so in the previous class I tried to recall the topics that we have covered earlier uh, which Hello students, so up until previous class we learnt about um, Lapun of exponents and uh, stretching and chromatic. So today we have lecture number 25 and today our topic is Michelson interferometer. We have started this in the last class but today we are going to discuss in detail. Michelson So, uh, let us draw the setup once again. This is an instrument, very important instrument, where we have an extended light source like this, and then light is coming in this path. And then here we have something called beam splitter which split the incident beam into two part. One is reflected, the angle of this beam splitter is 45 degree uh, with respect to this horizontal line and then one part will be transmitted and hit, it hits another mirror here I call it M1 and then it also reflects from this mirror and come back here also we have another mirror sitting we call it M2 This is M2 mirror and, and then it goes up but here you may remember that we put a similar structure a glass block the same material of this beam splitter with the same having the same width. So, this is a beam splitter which split the beam and this is a compensator. So, light goes in this direction, hit this portion, one portion is reflected passing through this compensator because this ray is passing only one time to this beam splitter where, where other beam is passing twice. So that we described in the last class, I'm not going to do this once again here. And then both the ray is collected here. So that is ray number one. This is here, it is reflected from this point. So this is ray number 2 which is reflected and then from this beam splitter and then again reflected by this mirror M2 and then come back in the same path. In this case also it, it is happening like that and at the end of the day these two ray will merge together and come to our eye or the detector. So this uh, so, this is ray 3 which is transmitted followed by a reflection through M1 
and then this is ray 4. Ray 4 is a combination of ray 2 and ray 3. Those, these two rays are traveling same path if the distance between M1 and M2 is same from, uh, with this, uh, from this beam, sp beam splitter. So, uh, that was the structure. We described this structure in the earlier, we have already discussed this structure in detail in the last class. I am not going to do that. So, that is the basic structure. So, today what we do, we try to understand that uh, what is the equivalent setup. So, what actually how these things works that we try to understand. So, from this figure we can see that somebody who is sitting here and looking what is the interference of these two light, it can see the two light that is coming from M1 and M2 because one ray is coming directly from M2, it is coming here and another is reflected by this, this beam splitter coming here and they will going to interfere through this, uh, this, this ray 4 and we can see the interference pattern. So, let us draw a equivalent picture to make life easy uh, and the equivalent picture. So, here what we do? This is the equivalent optics. equivalent optics for the Michelson interferometer. MI stands for Michelson interferometer. So, what is the equivalent optics? So, let me do that here. So, we have an extended source here suppose and then two mirror is sitting here. They are parallel to each other. These are the mirror because from this side, okay, let me draw first and then I'll going to explain. So, this is the source point, say O and then it is emitting the light like this. So, here the ray will reflect and another ray is also reflect from another mirror, these two. Say this is the angle theta there is going here and coming back like this and here we can place our instrument which is capturing uh, this interference pattern but virtually one can see because this mirror will virtually placed like this, this dotted line ok. And if I extend this This is one virtual source this is another virtual source. So, these two are in same line they are virtual sources 
because if we have say mirror 2 here and in original case the mirror 1 was perpendicular to mirror 2 so I just rotate this mirror 90 degree and assume that the placement of the mirror is here in the same uh, direction then these two mirrors are having the reflection and the reflection image will be here it is here in this point so it should be s2 source and this will be s1 prime this whatever the plane whatever the objective we have from from here and here these are the uh, these are the uh, ob images of that now you can s easily we can show that if and this is o1 prime that is the image of this original point o then we can see that these two virtual source is not at the same point but there is a there is a path difference between these two because they are in two different plane so this path difference delta p will be simply if this length is 2d it is very easy to show it is 2d cos of theta so the path difference is simply 2d cos of theta where the separation between these two mirror m1 and m2 is d and if this is essentially the equivalent structure so let me write here one by one so the mirror separation separation m2 m1 prime is equal to d then the image separation the image separation of the source plane this is a source plane source plane which is s1 prime s2 prime that has to be 2d so their separation will be 2d now the optical path difference between these two points as i mentioned this virtual source point uh, is uh, of o prime and o i have already mentioned that this is delta p equal to 2d cos theta and the fringe so this is a if the source has a extended source and if the uh, if we have a spot for example then the fringe pattern will be fringe pattern that one can have is simply concentric circles
concentric circles. So that is the equivalent picture, equivalent, equivalent optics for the Michelson interferometer that I have already mentioned uh, in the last class or in uh, this class. The now we need to check in detail the net optical part difference. This is the part difference we have, but if you look carefully in the previous figure that the beam splitter okay so there the lines are removed somehow so one can see that in one case the ray is reflected from this front surface that is the reflection from uh, from highest refractive index region to lowest refractive index. In other case, however, it is reflected from the back surface. In that case, the reflection is from lower refractive index to the so boundary is uh, is like that. In this side is a lower refractive index, and this side is a higher refractive index. So that means this due to this we need to have an additional. Uh, additional uh, part difference and that will give us the net part difference. So, the net part difference delta will be delta p which is this part difference 2d cos theta that is the geometrical part difference we had plus the part difference due to reflection. And as I mentioned the relative part difference so let me draw that once again the how this relative part difference is there. So that was the structure of the beam splitter and in one case the ray is falling here in one case which is reflecting like this and in other case it is transmitted and reflected back. So in one case this two arrow line I am just drawing uh, it is going like this direction and in other case this three arrow is coming and then get reflected from this region and then it goes here. So, in this, so there is a pi, so this is a beam splitter. So, obviously, there is a pi phase difference uh, that we had here. So, if this pi phase difference we consider, then our condition for uh, dark fringe. So, for dark fringe, the condition will be total path difference delta equal to delta P plus delta R which is equal to 2D cos of theta plus lambda by 2 which is due to this reflection that will be equal to the m plus half lambda odd multiple of lambda by 2 in other words. So, from this expression we can simply have for dark ring 2d cos theta d sorry 2d cos theta is equal to m of lambda because this lambda by 2 lambda by 2 should cancel out where 
m can take the value 0 1 2 etc these are the values m can take now for theta equal to 0 theta equal to 0 means we are talking about central spot we are talking about the central spot because the fringe pattern will be something like this let me draw concentric circles and this is our central spot. So, uh, for central sp spot we simply have 2D is equal to M lambda. So, for a given lambda, for a given lambda and d usually this m value should be very large so for central dark spot or fringe m I write max because this is a very high number will be 2d divided by lambda. Now for other case if I go from this spot to other spot other dark ring then there will be a value of cos theta cos theta will not be 0 and in that case what happened that d and lambda is same and we have a cos theta value so whatever the m value we have for the next ring it should be less than whatever we have here so m max that's why i write m max is 2d divided by lambda well with this condition let me now go back to the uh, ring structure and try to understand so this is the fringe pattern we have so let me draw it. So this is the central spot and then we have rings like this. and so on. Now this is a central spot. So for central spot say m max say this is 100. And then what happened? string it will be some less value and uh, I can calculate like this into lambda. So from these two expression one can get something like 2d 1 minus cos theta subtracting the lower one to the upper one then that is equal to m max minus m lambda or simply p lambda where p is a new integer 
so p is now a new integer so now if go back to this picture so, so suppose i have the central one the, in this central one the value of m max is 100 if i go to the next one so my m max my m value rather will be 99 where i have a p value which is 1 so that i can have because here in this equation you can see that my m max will be m plus p so m plus p will always be 100 and if i go one by one to the outer rings the m value will reduce and p value will going to increase so that if i add these two we will going to get back um, m max in a similar way this for example this ring my m will be say 98 and p will be 2 and so on for third ring my m will be 97 and p will be 3 and so on so another thing as d varies now that is important as d varies So, the fringe what happened suppose these two mirror whatever the mirror we have arrangement we change the relative difference between these two mirrors that means now d varies. So, as d varies the fringe the fringes appear to move. towards the center where they 